everyone, so today was a pretty crazy day in the stock market, so let me describe what happened. All the big investors out there took the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ and all of the giant tech stocks, they dug about a six foot trench in the ground, they threw all of those in there, and then they shoveled about 100,000 tons of crap onto them and just kind of dumped on all those stocks. So it was a really bad day for, for tech and for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. So, but here's what also happened was I was taking a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average and they actually had a good day along with all the financial institutions. So all those big bankers out there, I'm picturing that they're all grinning and stuff. So pretty much what's, that's what happened today. And I think that what I'm gonna start doing now so I'm going to start talking about, you know, just some stock market news. I'm not going to give you guys a lot of tips or anything, but I'm just going to keep you updated on what's happening, along with doing all of my other videos on top of it, all my, my normal finance and investing videos on top of that, because I follow the markets anyways. I can just talk to you guys like this, and I'm sure that you guys would like to hear it. So pretty much that's what happened today. Now we're going to cover um, what happened this week. So those of you that don't know, Google and Amazon both had share prices reach $1,000 for the first time in the past week. Awesome, right? And so they did really, really well up until today when both of their stocks dropped, what, 4% today? Let me go check here. I believe that, okay, so Apple dropped 4% today. That's a different stock. Um, Google <laughs> Google uh, dropped roughly 3.5% today. Microsoft dropped 2.8% today. Netflix dropped 4.5%. Now, the day's not over. There's still about an hour left in trading. Um, but all of these giant tech stocks just fell off the face of the earth today in, in one day. And so it was funny. Like, right when Amazon and Google both hit that $1,000 mark, um, the, the market just went, nope, you know what? That's enough. You know what, you hit a thousand, you've had a good time, we're gonna drop you about 50 bucks today. So that's what happened here. Uh, I think Google was at 1,000 and about $5 today and now they're at 979. And Amazon hit about $1,010 today and they're at roughly the same thing. And now again, we still have about an hour left in the trading day, but I just, I had to update you guys on this. I mean, this was the worst tech day of the entire year. Tech's been really hot this entire year and it just it just corrected itself. So that's actually a good thing because tech's really been worrying me the past past six months especially. I mean I've I've talked about Tesla a bunch. We're gonna talk to them talk about them at the end. But I've been talking about Tesla specifically how they've been they've lost more money last quarter than they were expected to lose. They actually doubled their losses than they were expected, and the stock went up 70% actually went 20% after that announcement, but it's gone up 70% this year. I mean, tech's been absolutely crazy. The valuations of these companies are just through the roof. And I think today was the first time where we saw a correction in the tech market, which is could be a good thing in the long run. Now, is this a sign for thing, I think things to come? Uh, you know, potentially a crash? I, I don't think so. Um, we could have a specific tech sector crash if this keeps going today, I, I don't expect that. I mean, I think that the markets, you know, we still have an hour left. I think that they're already kind of rebounding. So I'm not expecting a big major crash in tech, but still, I mean, the entire tech sector went down on average 2.75% today. 2.75%, that's a, I mean, think about that. If you get a 4% return in one year, that's, a, that's an okay return. 6% is pretty good. And the fact that you know, these stocks went down 3% in a day. I mean, all these rookie investors aren't gonna know what to do. So this could be a good time to actually buy tech, if anything. I don't really know. I don't know if, I, I think that I'll give more of my opinions on what, what I'm buying on my own stock market program website, but uh, I, I don't like giving tips to everyone because I don't wanna be that guy, right? I'll give some advice, but you know, I, I don't want to be the guy that g gives stock tips every day. I don't, I don't think that's me. Maybe I will. I don't know. I could go back on everything I said. So that's pretty much what happened. This is a really crazy day. Crazy day in a sense that, um, you know, it, it, the market as a whole actually was kind of average today, but just tech took a crap. <laughs> tech took a giant dump. I mean, they just shoveled like 10 tons of crap. Every, and here's the crazy thing about it is that there wasn't a catalyst. Usually when there's a big day like this for one sector, usually there's something that happens. Usually there's some big announcement, maybe uh, there's an earnings report that goes really bad, but there wasn't. 
It was just people are just selling off tech because they think that it was overvalued. That was the catalyst. It was, it was just nothing. It was just people wanting to sell. That's it. Which is a little, I, I, I think it's a good thing. It'll decrease the valuations of those companies by a little bit. So I think that's good. And I think that there's just a rotation out of the tech sector as a whole right now, which uh, I don't know where the money's going. I think as of today, a lot of that tech money is going into energy. We'll see if that lasts. But I mean, this was a massive, massive loss for a lot of people today. Um, so that's, again, it's it sucks. Um, but then again, I mean, a lot of people have been making a lot of money on tech in the past six months. So most people have still made money. Just today was really, really bad. And it got even worse, holy crap. It just, it, as I'm making this video in the last hour, it, it's pretty much dropped another, almost another 0.25% tech on its own. So it's officially a 3% loss today. Just, I mean, it's been crazy. I haven't seen this in, in a few months, to be honest. So, um, and it's something that only happens a couple times a year. It's crazy that this is happening. So, uh, some other news that happened this week. We're just going to cover some other stuff today. So, uh, even though today's been a bad day as a, as a whole for the NASDAQ and the S&P 500, they were at all-time highs yesterday. So, the markets themselves actually hit an all-time high on Thursday. Dow Jones actually, I think, might have hit an all-time high today. Just let me check here. Uh, yeah, Dow Jones hit, an, oh no, they hit an all-time high this morning. So Dow Jones hit an all-time high at 21,296 21, points. I believe that was the number. Uh, so they hit an all-time high. S&P hit an all-time high before they fell off a cliff today. They were at 2,445 points. We're going to talk about NASDAQ. They were at an all-time high this morning, uh, 6,341 points. And... Uh, yeah, uh, Dow Jones went up today. T TSX, the Canadian, the Toronto Stock Exchange. People don't pay attention to that. I think it's the fifth largest stock, fifth or sixth largest stock exchange in the world. It's it's just a, a few minutes away from me, so I have to mention it. They actually they had a really weird week, the Canadian or the Toronto Stock Exchange, because what happened midweek was that oil prices. Uh, dropped substantially because uh, American inventory of oil was a lot higher than was expected to be. And so oil prices dropped, I mean, I think it was about 4% or 5%. And then the, the stocks rallied today. Uh, a lot of the energy and oil stocks rallied today. And so, you know, the Toronto Stock Exchange took a big hit earlier in the week of a couple percentage points, and then it's rebounded completely. Well, that's had a good week. Um, let's see what else we want to talk about today. So oil was down 5%, but then it rebounded. Just mentioned that. NVIDIA. Here's a stock I wanted to talk about, actually. So NVIDIA has been absolutely crazy. And <laughs> what's funny is that I had some, what did I have NVIDIA? I think I had like a router by NVIDIA. I believe it was a router. And this was a decade ago. I didn't even realize they were still a company, to be honest. And so I, j I just looked at this. This month, they have had... 55% growth, 55%. So for those of you that don't know what an NVIDIA is, they're like a, I guess that they're a semi, are they a semiconductor tech company, I guess? And they had good earnings and they've completely rebounded in the, in the past month or so. I mean, they've been a fairly average stock for, what, uh, for about a decade or two. And then in the past year and three months, they've, I mean, essentially, look at this. So they, the stock value was at thir about 30 bucks January of 2016, and now it's at 119 as of June 9th, 2017. So they've had a really good month. However, them along with all the other tech stocks kind of got crapped on today. NVIDIA's are rebounding a little bit. I mean, they had a big drop of, they went down 13% today and they've rebounded uh, only to a loss of 9%. So I think that a lot of the tech stocks, we're in the closing hour right now. They're, they're rebounding a little bit, I guess. Let me check out the other ones here. We're gonna check out Google. So we're gonna check out Google stock. So Google stock, let's see if they've rebounded today. Not really, they've plateaued. So I mean, all these tech stocks, they're, they've, they're taking a big loss today, no matter what. There's only an hour left in, uh, before the close, closing bell. So, that's big. I mean, all those tech stocks, NVIDIA though, I mean, I, I didn't even know about that. And I've been paying attention to the markets a little bit, but they've been absolutely on fire the past month. Um, 
So, oh yeah, one thing I wanted to mention also was the Comey. The Comey, uh, was it James Comey? Is that his name, the FBI guy? So, <laughs> uh, maybe I should make a whole separate video on this about how Trump is artificially holding up the, uh, the stock market right now. But uh, there was, that was a big event today. So pretty much why that was important to the stock market and the economy as a whole was that if James Comey could um, give grounds for impeachment of Donald Trump in the party and give uh, another election, uh, give, give a, I don't know what the word is, a re-election, uh, kick Trump out of office and get another president in there. Um, if he were to give grounds for that, for Trump to have done something illegally like obstruction of justice, then um, if Trump were to get kicked out and impeached, I believe that the, the markets would take a big crap. And so that was a big thing this week. I mean, if there was concrete, not concrete, because they couldn't really give concrete evidence, but if there were grounds for impeachment by James Comey, Comey during his testimony about how Trump did something illegal in office, um, then we would have seen a big stock market tank. Because think about why the stock market is so artificially inflated right now. It's artificially inflated because, well, there's a lot of reasons, but one of them is because Trump is promising deregulation, which we're going to get to in about, about a second here, deregulation of all financial markets, uh, tax cuts for the average middle class, tax cuts across the board, um, corporate holidays for, for corporations that want to bring their money back over to the United States. He's promising a bunch of uh, just tax cuts in general. And they haven't taken effect yet. They're going to hopefully take effect in the next eight months. So the market, once Trump got in, that's one of the reasons why the market went crazy because tax cuts, there's more free money, there's more business activity. That's the promise of tax cuts. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why it's artificially inflated. I mean, the, the GDP growth of the United States hasn't really gone up that much. I, they, I mean, it hasn't done much for GDP. It's just been the market itself. The market's gone crazy about Trump being in office. And I'm just I'm a little bit nervous that if th that these markets are so artificially inflated by Trump that you know, um, it's, it's, everything's overvalued right now. If he were to get impeached, which he's not, that's, that's a, just a liberal kind of thinking. I think that I, I don't really know where I stand politically. I think I'm more conservative, but I have a lot of liberal point of view. So when I say liberal or conservative, I, I kind of have both. But that's a big, like, really, really liberal thing that they want grounds for impeachment of Trump, but you can't, there isn't any grounds for that right now. So he's not going to get impeached. So the markets uh, stayed the same roughly had a little bit of growth, but they, they pretty much stayed the same this week after the James Comey testimony. Um, another thing too. So the Republican party decided to roll back the Dodd Frank bill. For those of you that don't know what the Dodd Frank bill is. So, um, everyone knows what happened in 2008, right? The, uh, the markets got so deregulated over the past decade, two decades that, Everything collapsed. All the financial markets collapsed. We had companies, bailouts, giant companies needed bailouts, even though they didn't use that money wisely. Uh, insurance companies, big investment companies, they all failed. What was the one that went up belly up? Was it Bear Stearns that went belly up? I forget. But everyone knows what happened. There was so much deregulation. People were taking advantage of the, the average person and people they were handing out subprime mortgages. There was a bunch of stuff. And so what happened was in 2010, was the Obama administration introduced a, a bill which would heavily regulate the financial market. This was called the Dodd-Frank bill. And pretty much what it, it did a, a bunch of things, but there was two main things. It required transparency from all investment companies, bank companies, insurance companies, so that every consumer, every investor knew exactly what they were getting. They All the fees were revealed. If they were to sell off their mortgage, that had to be told to them now. Um, they had complete oversight and so the government also had oversight. The second thing was they had oversight over everything that the bank was doing. Banks, financial institutions, insurance companies. The government had created its own um, branch to oversee all of the financial institutions, to make sure that they were following all the rules and not doing anything illegal that could screw over the economy. Um, and so uh, Trump decided and the Republican Party decided to roll that back, at least about half of the policies in there. Meaning that there was a, this happened, what, two days ago? So there was a giant, dereg there's a giant deregulation in the financial markets coming. And 
What did we see because of that? Because of all this deregulation, it promises more activity in the financial markets and probably more profits for financial companies, which for the economy as a whole, in the short term, that's good. In the long term, probably not good. Um, but <laughs> so, of course, what we saw immediately after that happened, all of the financial companies just took off. It just completely took off in the in a good direction. So I think that we saw. I think what well, I think what happened to J.P. Morgan, uh, J.P. Morgan. I think that they're more of an investment company. But I mean, since that happened, they've gone up uh, essentially four percent in the last two days. Uh, I think we'll, we'll check some of the banks here. We'll check Citibank's gone up. I mean, they've been in the crapper. They since that happened, they've gone up five percent. They've gone up five percent. So. Financial companies are going to be deregulated again. And that's probably bad news for the middle class person, but it's good news if you're an investor in the financial institutions. Probably good news if you're an investor in the stock market as a whole for now. But it, it's going to probably lead to another, another crash again. Uh, it, this, it probably won't lead to it for the next one. Like There should be a correction coming in the next year or two. Uh, this one would be for down the road, like a 10 year thing, all this deregulation, it could hurt people in the long run here. So uh, let's see what else I wanted to talk about. Some other things that happened this week was the federal, okay, so this is going to happen next week. So this is something that I'm probably going to talk about next week was the Federal Reserve meeting. So there's going to be one, I think it's next week. I think that there's a Federal Reserve meeting next week. and. Pretty much, if you guys don't know what happens, they have these meetings every, they can have one every few weeks, they can have one every few months or quarter, they change it up. Um, but this one is expected to raise interest rates. This one next week. So there's a survey pulled for 91% of um, analysts. What, take whatever you want from being called an analyst. 91% of analysts expect a 0.25% uh, a rate hike or a po or 25 point rate hike interest rate hike. So what does that mean for the financial markets? Probably not very much. It's a very minor rate hike in interest rates. I mean, what is it at now? It's at like 1% right now. Let me check here. Interest rates. What are interest rates right now? Uh, I think that they're around 1, 1%. But regardless, if, if the rates go up 0.25%, pretty much what that's going to mean is that there might be a little bit of a downturn in the market because for those of you that don't know what happens when interest rates rise, uh, the, there's the psychology for the big time investors. They usually think that when interest rates rise, it gets harder to borrow money and financial institutions get less of a profit. And so there's less business activity. The economy will probably subtract. That's what most uh, investors think. But because this is such a small rate hike, I, I don't see it doing very much in the long run. So a 0.25% rate hike, it's probably a good thing. I mean, interest rates are so low right now. Uh, interest rates, sorry, I want to find the rate right now. I'm sorry, this is kind of, I usually should be prepared for this. But uh, see what the rates are right now. So they're at 1%, I was correct. So rates are at 1% right now. So if it's, it's going to go up 25% most likely to, to 1.25%. Um, wait, let me see here, let me see here. Yeah, it's at 1%, sorry forecasted to go up to 1.25 percent what does that mean for you it just means that it's going to be a little if you want to get a mortgage for the average person it's going to get a little bit more expensive not very much uh you probably your credit card rates are going to go up a little bit but not very much your bank deposits are going to go up a little bit not very much your fees for those so for the average person it doesn't mean much but for as an investor it probably means that the markets are probably going to slow, slow down a little bit however you know, what if the rates don't go up? What if, or what if the rates go up 0.5% or 0.4%? That's something. In my opinion, in my personal opinion, we need rates to go up because there's a crash coming in the next year or two or a correction coming. And if we don't have the ability to lower interest rates again, the entire, the entire system's gonna be fucked for like a decade. Then that's my generation. So that's just, that's personally my opinion on the matter is that I think rich, I hope they go up. Even if, I, even if they're not supposed to go up right now because we're in really weird economic times, they sh I think they should go up more. Instead of getting a 0.25% rate hike, I hope they go up 0.5%. And I hope that markets get really corrected. We're seeing such crazy evaluations right now for these companies, man. I mean, PE ratios, I was looking this up. We're at the fourth highest PE ratio valuation in history right now. 
So the other four times, it was high for like a month in, actually, I think it's the fourth or fifth highest. So it was high for like a month in 2009. Uh, that doesn't count though, um, because it was like a spike and then it went way down. It was crazy for one month. Um, in 2007, they were a little bit higher. In 1999, they were higher. And in 1927, they were higher, right before the stock market crash. So, I mean, if that was a sign of things coming, things should be coming. Maybe it's just for one sector. Maybe it's just for tech. I don't really know. Um, so a few things more I wanted to mention here, just to kind of get this out of the way. A few things I wanted to mention. FTSE, so that is the, they call it the FTSE 100. <laughs> I know it's, it's funny. Um, so the FTSE 100 is the essentially an index for the top 100 companies in London or the UK, England, whatever you want to call them. Um, and so what happened was the UK election happened. That fell about 1% or 0.5%. The euro dropped. I actually haven't checked what it was like today. FTSE 100. Let me check if they're still down today. No, they're up. Okay, so they completely rebounded. Never mind. So after the election... It dropped at one, about 1%, and then opening today, they actually just completely recovered. Almost. Almost. Um, so, again, again, this is why the news, you shouldn't listen to a lot of the news. I mean, an election dropped, pro dropped the entire market 1%, and then people realized how stupid they were, and then they completely rebounded today. So, um, that happened in London. I already touched on Toronto. I talked about the American markets. Retailers are down. A lot of the retailers are down. Actually, there was news today about the Hudson Bay Company. They're a Canadian company that is pretty big in the US, actually. They're cutting 2,000 jobs, which sucks. There was a report that came out about 200 retailers are distressed, are in a really bad position where they expect a major downturn in the next year. And this is just from one, one giant uh, research company. So take that at what you will. Normally, the number is supposed to be about 40 to 40 to 50 on any given year, but right now it's about 200, so retailers are getting hit hard. Some of which are doing okay. I mean, Costco doing okay, Walmart still doing okay, the giant ones are still okay, but some of the ones that haven't adapted to the online strategy, Walmart's adapted, they are adapting, Costco's adapting, but the ones that haven't adapted, a lot of the smaller ones, they're done. They're going the way of the dinosaur. Um, so what, some other things that came out this week, so 60%, <laughs> here's, a, here's a sign of overconfidence. So 60% of business owners have full confidence that they will make more money this year than they have ever before. 60%, this was thousands of small business owners. That's not good. Usually when confidence is high, that's not good. Um, and 58% of business owners, <laughs> this is just a random thing, take it what you will. So 58% of business owners fully uh, support Trump, which is okay. I mean, if you wanna support Trump, I'm fine with that. Fine with that. I mean, 50% of the country supports Trump. I mean, I'm a fan of lower taxes because when you make a lot of money, you know, the quickest way to become a conservative is to start a business, <laughs> start a, a business and you'll, you'll realize how much money gets like business owners get taxed at 40%. They get taxed at 40% if you make a lot of money. And there's a real possibility next year I'll be taxed at 40% because I have a lot of business expenses this year because my infrastructure is, I put a lot of money into business expenses, advertising, setting up everything. And so my net income is probably gonna be like 100 grand. It could be less, could be 70, could be 150. Uh, probably not 150, but it's probably gonna be around $100,000. Somewhere around there, even though my gross is gonna be much more. But I mean, next year, if things keep growing, I mean, we're gonna see, we're gonna see a, um, a big tax bill for me of like 40% potentially. So let's see here, uh, retailers, we talked about the surveys. Oh yeah, I just feel bad for one company. And I knew that this was happening. I talked about the Snapchat stock. So Snapchat stock here. I mean, they've been hit so hard this year, guys. I feel so bad for them. So they IPO'd at roughly $27 and now they're at nine. No, they're not at nine, they're at 18. So they lost about nine. They lost, they've lost 33% of their value from their IPO a few months ago. And today, I mean, today they're down 5%. Today. Ah, and Snapchat, I, it's one of those companies which I feel bad about, but I saw this coming. They haven't made money yet. Their user growth is down and Instagram's taking away their entire market share. Instagram copied Snapchat with Instagram stories and Instagram 
And inst well, Instagram's owned by Facebook, right? So Facebook's been introducing it too, but it hasn't really worked out as well. Facebook Live's been good though. But Instagram Stories essentially copied Snapchat and it's doing better, doing better than Snapchat. And I don't know if Snapchat can compete right now. Snapchat still has a lot of more of, you're able to communicate with one another, like you can send a snap to a friend, they can snap you back or so on. Instagram doesn't really do that that well. Um, but Snapchat's just a stock which I didn't want to bet on and for good reason. People were so up on Snapchat and a lot of these stocks. I mean, I was talking about the GoPro too. Look what happened to GoPro. Uh, GoPro, at they've lost 2% today. Uh, they actually had an okay week though. They probably maintained their entire week, but I mean, what happened to them this year? This year, they lo they've been down 50% this year. I mean, that's just, there's some of the tech companies that people bet on just because they're a new tech company. I always tell, like, I can't drill this into you guys enough. All those new tech companies, like we're gonna, people wanted to invest in Twitter. I mean, I love Twitter, I use it. I love, tw I use GoPro. But the, they just don't make money. And so when people come up to me with all these stock tips about some of these companies, I mean, like, look, Twitter IPO'd at what, 69 bucks, now it's 52. They lost, wait, no, 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 69 bucks, and now it's 16. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, that's not a big loss. I mean, when people text me all these new tech companies, like, there's only a handful that I trust. I, you know, I trust, I trust Apple, because they've been around a long time. I trust Microsoft, they've been around a long time. Google, I trust, even though they don't pay a dividend, I still trust them. Amazon, I'm starting to trust. I mean, so when people text me all these tech companies that haven't made money and they're just betting on them because they're betting on them, like, you got to get your head right, guys. You got to get your head right about some of these tech companies. You can't, you, you have to dig deeper and you have to realize what this company actually is. I mean, if a company has 100 million users, uh, a tech company, but they aren't making money and their user growth is only a million per month or a million per, I don't know, a couple million per year, and they haven't figured out advertising, they haven't figured out how to monetize it properly, they're still losing money, they have to pay for all these servers, all their employees, they have giant overheads, they have a lot of debt, they're selling more stock now more than ever. I mean, you gotta think about these things. So, uh, I mean, some of them, you do make it tons of money from. When you're right, you're right. When you are right on these stocks, you are, you're definitely right. Facebook, Facebook, I mean, would fall under all of these categories, but that turned into a giant. They ended up buying out all the other companies. So Facebook, and they perfected monetization with Facebook ads. So it occasionally works out, but I mean, I get so many questions about, should I invest in Twitter? Should I invest in Snapchat? I always say, I wouldn't, but you can. You can, but I wouldn't. And so we're gonna see, I know it's a, it's a different one, but Uber is gonna probably IPO, right? Uh, what Uber can do, so I think that uh, I think Uber is the big IPO, right? I think that they're going to IPO. Let me just check here. Uh, it's expected they they will go public in 2017, probably later this year. So Uber is a little bit different. However, they've had some problems recently. I don't know how. I guess that they, there's still tons of room for growth. I mean, they've only tackled the big cities. So I don't know what to think of them. They're a little bit of a different company. They're not just an online company. They're more of a they're an app company that exists in the real world. So I don't know what's gonna happen with them. There's some other big IPOs that are gonna happen. Blue Apron, Saudi Aramco, they're all happening soon. Um, so uh, you know what, we're gonna stop that. We're gonna, this video is really long, so we're gonna cover one more thing here. Tesla. Oh, Tesla. Oh, this is the, the one company which I don't know if I'll ever invest in, but I will hope that they do very well. Because <laughs> I wanna say congratulations. They joined the Fortune 500 uh, for the, for well, obviously for the first time, right? They joined the Fortune 500 companies. Uh, great for them. They've had a really bad day today. They had a, a really good month, but they've had a really terrible day today. They've lost about 3% of value today, down about 10 points. So here's what I want to say about Tesla is that um, congratulations. You've defied the common laws of investing for a month, <laughs> or not for a month, for a year, for about a, five years now. You keep losing money, yet your value of your company keeps going up and your revenue keeps going up. I understand why. I know that you have tons of debt, you have tons of debt, and your revenue is seven billion, you have debt of, what, eight billion? Eight billion or so? 
Um, you have four billion cash on hand. I mean, I love you as a company, but I just, man, I'm so worried about you guys. <laughs> Cause I think I've talked about this in another video about Tesla, but like they're making their, their model three car, right? And they're about to walk into uh, probably a bad economic time in the next two years for the average middle-class American. And I don't know if they're gonna be able to afford the car in, in a year or two. Because if a correction were to happen, if the economy were to take a hit, people aren't gonna be able to buy these cars. And Teslas are relying on that, on people buying those middle-class cars. So I don't know what's gonna happen with them. But you know what, congratulations Tesla, Fortune 500 company. I think that's gonna wrap this video up. I just thought I'd give like a summary of what happened in the stock market this week. So uh, let me know if you guys want more videos like this because I, these are fun. I mean, I just pretty much just summarized what, I, what I've heard in the news this week. It's really cool and I give my opinions on them. So uh, I guess I should say before I wrap this up, actually, oh, Tesla just took another crap. Um, there, sorry, I'm having the live, tra live trading feed going on here. And oh my God, Nvidia is just taking a massive hit today. Same with Google. Oh, I feel bad for all these tech companies. I mean, I've invested in, uh, I think, two of them. I'm invested in two of them, but um, I'm still diversified, you know, fairly uh, across the board here. So I'm not taking a big hit or anything. But what I want to say is that uh, I guess check out my stock market program in the link below. I'll give breakdowns of specific stocks about specific companies, what I think about them. I'm starting to do that a little bit more. You get a $200 program for free if you get the stock market program. And you get like, what, 16 hours of content. So if you want to learn more about how to, how to invest in the stock market, how if you're a beginner, don't know much about it, um, or even if you're, you, you've made a few trades but you just want some more information, you want my opinions on stuff, just go sign up for that. Um, and it's like 57 bucks or something. Uh, go check it out. Links in the description below. You get tons of content now. I, th I think I have 16 hours up there. 14 hours, something around there. Go check it out. And yeah, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. You're all very beautiful people. And I'll see you guys in the next video.